morning and welcome to Lanier. I'm glad all of you are here for, for worship today. This is a, the back end of the fall break, and so maybe next week we'll get everybody back in here and have a good full house. Next Sunday morning we will have the Doxology Choir, the Youth Choir, of the Peachtree Road United Methodist Church singing for us as we celebrate together the World Communion Sunday Sacrament. So uh, I hope all of you will be here. And uh, that choir is always fabulous. And I know you want to hear them next Sunday morning. Again, welcome to each one of you. I hope you'll sign the attendance register in a black folder that's, uh, that's close to the center aisle there. We uh, will have an administrative council meeting immediately after the, this worship service this morning over in Dean Hall. So members, please make your way on over as, as soon as possible. The choir will not meet on Wednesday this week, but meet tomorrow night. So 7 o'clock. Wednesday night, we have the women's Bible study and the BLAST program. So bring your children from a five-year-old through fourth grade through the BLAST program on, on Wednesday night. Um, we do have coming up several events. Our charge conference is on Sunday, October the 13th at 5 in the afternoon. Our district superintendent will be here to, to preside and do the business of, of the church at that time. I, I think they had a really good day yesterday with, with the women. I will say event. yes, it was a great day. It was a small group, and but it was a cozy little group, and good. we just had a blessed day. Yes, we did. Fabulous, mm -hmm. fabulous. So stay tuned. I got to quick another answer. <laughs> All right. If you weren't able to make yesterday, um, on our for our next women's brunch, the fourth Saturday in October. We're going to do a mini reprise of the event, and we're going to try to meet down here at uh, Hall Creek Park. So okay. just stay tuned for that information. All right, that that really sounds super. Note in your bulletin that uh, we're doing some things for children's ministry, and there's going to be a trunk or treat event here on the Sunday afternoon before Halloween. So be sure to get your items all together and come raise your trunk and have some children, some candy in there for, for the children so we can do something here in the community to draw children here to uh, Linear Church. We're glad you're here today. Thank you each one for coming. Let's join together now in singing our opening hymn.
us affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and stood at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. some time. So keep Matt and Laurie Terribolis in your prayers. Let's pray together. Greater you, O Lord, and greatly to be praised. In your love for us, you've blessed us and sustained us in ways that exceed our ability to express gratitude. May our prayers to you humbly offer the best we know and realize that you're familiar with our hearts. Thank you, God. Thank you. As your own people, keep us praying for one another and for the world in which we live. How we're troubled over the pain and heartache that we experience. Let me put feet under our prayers by doing that which is in keeping with what you've taught us. Forgive us for reading and studying the scriptures and living our lives as if we have not heard. Lord, may we celebrate your creation and your ability to sustain us. Let's not forget that it's you who made us and not we ourselves. As we look around us, there are needs which we can meet. There is help that awaits our action. There's encouragement and care that is to be completed. Let us not neglect our neighbors and fail to serve and witness to them of your goodness and your awesome abilities. Our thoughts are with those who are ill and hospitalized this morning. May the touch of your healing hand be real to them. Where there's discouragement or fear or pain, may each find relief. With our brothers and sisters in Liberia and our Christian friends around the world, we join in prayer as we pray the prayer our Lord taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Remembering the words of our Lord, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let's worship God now with our tithes and our offerings. <coughs> since your presence today. We see it in the beauty of the day that you've given us. We hear it in the music and words of praise that are offered here. Help us, oh God, to thank you, to thank you rightly for all you've done for us. Most of all, for the gift of your Son, our Savior. Help us to use these gifts now to share the good news about him in the whole world. We ask this in his name.
Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of God for the people of God.
in my reading. Amen. You know, most of us have, have seen multiple travel advertisements, whether in airports or on television or at travel agencies. Usually, they picture that for which an area is known. When you think about New York City, you, you think about the Statue of Liberty or the Manhattan skyline. They're the bright lights of Las Vegas and the roulette wheel and flashing hotel marquees. New Orleans has its, New Orleans has its jazz bands. San Francisco, its Golden Gate. London, Parliament Houses, and Big Ben. Washington, D.C., the Lincoln uh, statue and the, the Capitol Dome and the Washington Monument. Germany has its Bavarian snow-capped mountain and, and tall steeple village churches framed in those mountains. I imagine that you can add multiple images to this list yourself. As a Chattanooga, there's to be Rock City and the Walnut Street Bridge and Moccasin Bend. Asheville has its mountains and its arts and, and its crafts. So where can I stop? Where can I stop? Maxie Dunn, a longtime pastor and university president, says if the church were to create a poster to invite people to join us, what would we present? Who are we Christians? He points out that in our scripture for today, James has drawn a word portrait for the church. That portrait contains three dynamic words. Praying, celebrating, caring. Hear that again. Praying, celebrating, caring. Lutheran pastor Thomas Lentz in his book entitled Sleeping In on Sunday, and that may have happened around here somewhere, speaks of uh, Jesus' instruction to us. When you're in trouble, pray. When you're sick, seek the prayers of your friends. When you have sinned, confess. We've been taught about the power of prayer. It is so easy for us to neglect this spiritual gift. Our worship every Sunday begins and ends in, in prayer. Prayer is an essential part of our lives. Prayer is entering into the presence of God. We tend to think of prayer as, as a means of, of getting something for ourselves. But it's more importantly a means of giving ourselves to Almighty God. Look at the life of Jesus and how important prayer was to His life. When overworked, he saw a quiet place to get away and pray. When concerned about the future, he went apart to pray. When he was disappointed, he saw comfort in his prayer. Prayer helps us deal with frustration and anger. Have you ever been so angry with, with someone that you couldn't stop thinking about it? Instead of praying to stop that anger, Pray that good things will come to the person who has angered you. Pray for his or her welfare. Pray for God's blessings on him or her. And something amazing will happen. The hurt and anger will gradually drift away. Jesus pointed out that our own welfare depends upon our ability to forgive. Isn't it clear that prayer does something for us? Prayer does something in us. Prayer does something through us. A good picture of the church will always include its members praying. The second part of the church's portrait is that it's a celebrating place, which is made up of, of celebrating people. James wrote, is any cheerful? Let that person sing praise. Maxie Dunham says it was characteristic of, of early Christians that they were always ready to burst into song. The early church was a singing church, and their singing was a sign of their joy in the Lord. The joy was rooted in their confidence in, in God's salvation. 
God's enabling presence in their lives and the Savior's early return. Jesus has given His early followers this warning and promise. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, be joyful. I have overcome the world. But that kind of assurance, it's no wonder that G.K. Chesterton said that joy is the gigantic secret of the Christian. Hear that again. Joy is the gigantic secret of the Christian. Brian Bachnight was for many years pastor of Christ United Methodist Church in Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. He was a prolific author. The joy that he exhibited was at least in part to be attributed to his father. Bob and I said that when he and his sisters were young, their father used to demonstrate his zest for living by jumping into the air and clicking his heels together before ascending, descending to earth again. What he especially loved during this leap, or during this leap, was he seemed to want to do it at inappropriate times. The family would be in some formal or awesome setting, and he would quietly say, I feel a jump coming on. <laughs> Embarrassed, the children would protest, but he'd do it anyway. Every day, life offers all sorts of reasons for joy and celebration, but most of us don't see them. And even when we do see them, we control ourselves. We squelch our emotions. We clench our hands rather than clap them. We hold our lips tight lest we should surprise others with, with a shout of excitement. You know, we're coming to a wonderful time in the church when we celebrate so many key events. Next Sunday is, is World Communion Sunday. And we celebrate together our kinship in the faith. We forget that we are more alike than we are different. Then we rejoice a few weeks later in the Reformation that freed us all to have ready access to the throne of God. We're grateful for the saints who've gone before and on whose shoulders we stand as we worship one Sunday later, All Saints Day. Then you know what follows is a season of thanksgiving and the joy of celebrating what God has done for us. Shortly thereafter, there comes Advent, the preparation for the coming of our Lord again at, at Christmas time. My, what we have to celebrate. We ought to feel a jump coming on. We ought to feel it. You know, when Beaver Toyota was advertising, let us wow you. I used to use our church sign to say, our wow is bigger. <laughs> Indeed, it is. But we've allowed Toyota and others to communicate a jump of joy that's limited and comes and goes by chance. The joy Jesus gives us is not dependent on circumstances, but on our relationship with the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Any worthy portrait of the church finds it being comprised of a celebrating people. The third portrait of the church is that of a caring people. The message from James instructs, is anyone suffering? Hey! Is anyone sick? Call the elders, confess your sins, and pray for one another. The whole passage is a picture of a people attending the needs of others. Just a few days ago, a Delta plane had to return to the Salt Lake City because a cabin did not pressurize. You heard the story of, of shattered eardrums and nosebleeds. It was a scary time for these passengers. Only a few years ago, there were 155 people on board a plane flying, flying home from Australia. A cargo door failed and ripped open a huge hole in the side of the aircraft. Nine per people perished when pressurized air sucked them out into the thin, rarefied air at 24,000 feet altitude. Terry Lapham, age 31, was sitting close to that fateful hole 
She said to the reporters, the whole plane was falling to pieces. And I thought, this is it. There was a man in front of me. I don't know who he was, but he was a wonderful, wonderful man. He held my hand and comforted me. It was so lovely and so comforting to have someone's hand to hold. It's true that not only when life is being threatened, it's always comforting to have someone's hand to hold. When as a teenager, we lost the love that we thought was, was forever. When as a parent, our children were trying their wings, when a spouse has died, when our job is folded and our bank account is, is dwindling, and someone has spoken a harsh word that wounded our hearts, you can think of all kinds of occasions when it's so comforting to have someone's hand to hold. The church ought to be that kind of place where people hold the hands of people in need. And even more, where people who care reach out and love and concern to persons outside the church. That, my friends, can be a genuine offer of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Someone has been sending a message around on Facebook lately that uh, speaks to this message in, in James' letter. It's entitled, How to Pray When You Have No Words. First it says, pray in silence. When words fail us, silence can be a powerful form of prayer. Second, pray a breath prayer. A breath prayer is, is a simple, short prayer that you can repeat multiple times under your breath. Pray with your tears. Tears can be a form of prayer when words are hard to come by. God sees our tears and understands the pain behind them. Pray with music. Listening to or singing worship songs can, can be a, a form of prayer. Pray with songs. Speak the beautiful words of the Old Testament hymns as in Psalm 143. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness, come to my relief. The genuine portrait of the church is that of a praying, celebrating, and caring group of people committed to the good news of Jesus Christ. The matter of fact is, you can be that portrait. And you can be that portrait. And I can be that portrait. Let's get about it. Let's get about it. Lord, we thank you for this message of James and how we are indeed reminded that we are to be a praying, celebrating, and caring group of people. Enable us, O oh Lord, to put forth the effort to do what is required to be the kind of church we need to be. For we ask this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. As we uh, sing our closing hymn this morning, there are those who wish to join the church this morning. We're delighted. And I'll ask them to come forward as, as we sing that hymn. Let's join together now and sing our closing hymn.
just wonderful to have come to be a part of this fellowship. They, uh, they're members of the Davis Memorial Christian Church in Taylorville, Illinois, and they are going to maintain their membership there, but they affiliate members of, of our congregation here. So we're delighted to have them as a part of the fellowship of this church. I hope you'll come by and welcome them to our congregation following the dedication this morning. We have a wonderful membership in this church. Will you be loyal to the Lanier United Methodist Church and the Holy of your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? We extend to you the fellowship, the hand of fellowship, and welcome you to Lanier Church. It's our pleasure to have you. Each of you, please welcome me this morning. We, my friends, want to be a hearing church, a celebrating church. Church. You can't live it. You can leave this building, but you can't leave the church. For where you are, there is the church also. Go in the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Love one another. Sin no more. 